Hi everyone, this is Nathan here with the ebookreader.com. I've got the new Sony Reader Wi-Fi in for this review, the PRS T1. So this is the new design from Sony. They've got the plastic body here. It's kind of like a, a glossy black finish. There's also the white and red um, instead of the aluminum like the old Sony Readers had. Uh, down here we've got the reset port. There's a, a USB connector, the headphone jack, and the power button. Uh, on the side there's a micro SD card slot. So um, we've got a different uh, user interface as well. Uh, this is the home screen. We've got the two pages to the home screen. You've got a lot to set up here. Um, there's also a notification menu up here. Um, so as you can tell, if you've used Android, this looks very much like Android, and it definitely is Android. Um, I found out in one of the uh, menus in here, it says Android. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead and show you how the book part of the uh, Sony Reader works. So you've got the layout, the bookshelf view. There's also a list view. And then you got the search and sorting options as well. So when we go into a book, what I really like first off, we've got landscape mode. And if you ever had one of the older Sony readers, you know that landscape mode was a disaster because it would um, break the page down into two sections essentially, and you'd have like overlapping text like grayed out at the top and bottom. So no, it reflows the text perfectly here. You don't have any of the overlap. So I really uh, think they did a good job with the landscape mode. That's for sure. So to change landscape, you got the different menu options in here go back to orientation okay so we can turn pages you don't do the tap with Sony's you gotta do a little bit of a swipe um, just as small as like a quarter of an inch usually does it to turn pages um, so as you can see they do the full flash when they turn pages the newer some of the newer ones like the Kindle the Kobo and the uh, um, Nook they have the uh, partial rate page refresh but the Sony does the full page refresh uh, currently so we've got a lot, some different options in here You've got this navigate page, so if you want to jump through the table of contents or enter a page number specifically, you can. Um, notes, that shows the list of notes for your book, um, for your different highlights and text added. Oops, I hit back twice. Let's go back here. Okay, so some of the other options in here, we've got the new font settings for the Sony readers. This is really cool. So we got more font sizes now than used to. But really small, all the way up to large. But uh, the great thing about it is they added some new font choices now. I really kind of like this one here. It's really dark. So we've got, uh, we've got some different font choices now. Used to we just had the original font, which you were stuck with all the time. And if you could add different fonts, uh, it was kind of a workaround, putting a folder in the uh, um, Sony Reader and then setting it up with the CSS. But now we can just go right in here and switch font um, on the fly. So yeah, there's some different options in there. Um, so that's, a, that's definitely an improvement over the older Sony Readers. Custom view. So custom view, this is more for like PDFs, but it will work if you have like wide margins in your book as well. Um, so there's different page modes. These, like I said, these are mostly for PDFs. I'll do a separate PDF review. This review is mostly going to be a general review. I'll show you most of the features, and I'm going to do individual reviews for specific features like the web browser PDFs and stuff like that. Okay, so like I said, that's pretty much for PDFs right here. Some of the other view options. So you can crop the page. You can set like uh, custom cropping, or you can do auto. See the manual? You have these little arrows in the corner, and you can crop it however much you want to. So that's a, that's a new feature too, actually. That's actually pretty cool. I haven't really tested it out a whole lot yet. I'll try that more with PDFs. And then I'll have a little crop icon down here once you crop. Okay, so what was the last selection in here? We had the adjust view. Okay, so this adjusts the contrast. So like, again, this works best for PDFs if you have like a PDF with light, uh, light font. It's kind of gr grayed out. You can darken the font by using some of these settings. And there's also a custom dial down there. So the older Sony readers had that as well, but we've kind of got a whole new setup. Uh, like all the stuff is still pretty much here, all the features. It's just uh, there's a different way of going about them. So we've still got the on-screen uh, features right here, and the uh, reader actually comes with a stylus. It doesn't have anywhere to co connect it. Like the old ones, you could slide it into the frame, but uh, this one, yeah, it's kind of got a free stylus, uh, free style stylus that it comes with. You can just uh, use uh, for the touch screen as well. And there's the eraser icon. Okay, so one different feature with the uh, reader Wi-Fi here is we've got the pinch zooming. So obviously this really isn't a whole lot of use when you're reading a book like this because it just sort of cuts the text off and makes it larger. You'd obviously just use larger font size. But for stuff like PDFs, viewing images, uh, that's where that comes in really handy because like 
once you zoom in like this, it actually keeps that setting when you uh, switch pages as well. And then it keeps the little icon down there so that you know uh, that it's uh, zoomed in. Okay, so you can also do the on-screen stuff here. This way you hold down on an item and you bring up the options to do this. You can also add notes this way. Um, if you don't want to add the notes over the top of the screen, you can add text notes using the keyboard. You can tie uh, like a written note to the actual word as well if you do it by drawing. So if you go by keyboard, you get the, the um, keyboard up here and you can add notes this way. And then it will get tied to that right there and you get the little icon for it. So you've also got the other options in here. We've got the highlight. You can move these little uh, ends here if you want to move the highlights. They do work pretty smoothly here, actually. Um, you got the different highlights. You can add notes to the highlights. So we've also got search as well. So if you wanted to search a word or whatever, a phrase, you could hit that on Wikipedia. And that will launch the web browser. So it'll actually uh, have to connect the web browser because it, uh, to save the battery, it keeps it um, disconnected unless you're using the Wi-Fi. So it does take in a couple seconds to load up here. But once you have it going, you can access it again quickly. So that way you can get to the Wikipedia stuff. Uh, so one cool thing while I hear about the browser, like I said, I'll do a more in-depth review showing a lot of features with the browser. Cool thing though is like scrolling works pretty smoothly. Look at that. It's kind of surprising how well smooth scrolling works. Um, you've also got different windows. You can switch the orientation. There's a bunch of settings in there. Just go back to reading as well. Capture screenshot. That's kind of unusual. I'm surprised that they have that on here. It'd be kind of nice if they had that for the other um, e-reading functions as well. So uh, let's go ahead and you can open different windows. So uh, pinch zooming works, but it's not going to work on this page because it's not set up. This is like the mobile website and it's not set up for it or whatever. But like if you go to other pages, let's go here. So like you get the Google search results, that's kind of cool how it's already formatted for the size of the screen. So you don't have to really zoom in at all. But yeah, you can zoom in more if you want using the pinch zooming. It's actually pretty smooth too, once it works. So one thing you'll notice, like the most annoying thing is the fact that the screen refreshes a lot. You get lots of black flashes is one thing I noticed. They could do well with uh, eliminating some of that. Okay, let's go back to the ebook here and I'll show you the last... Uh, last of the features. So these books right here are actually downloaded with the web browser through Feedbooks. I wanted to see if the web browser would download uh, titles and it does. So last of the features we had in here uh, showed you the handwriting, uh, the on-screen stuff is what we were talking about, weren't we? Um, so that you have the different dictionaries. You hold this down, you hold down on a word, you get the different uh, dictionary definitions right here. If you click the actual thing here you can go into the full dictionary and run more searches that way as well. Um, if you want to change dictionaries, there's this uh, different list right here. So they've got a bunch of uh, foreign language dictionaries as well. Okay, so let me move on to some of these other features. Obviously, you can have the periodicals delivered over Wi-Fi. Uh, you got collections. The reader store is obviously on here. Is downloading ebooks from them. It does take a few seconds to load, but uh, Wi-Fi is already connected, so it shouldn't take too long. All right, so you got the home screen. It's just the usual layout. I kind of like Sony's ebook store, actually. Maybe they don't have the best selection all the time, but they do kind of have uh, good sorting options. You've also got Google ebooks in here. So let's go ahead and hit some of the new arrivals. So you've got the different categories. Uh, let me show you how this works here. Um, so you've got the overview, you've got the, the information about the author. It's pretty much set up like how Sony's website is if you've ever been to the Reader Store website. And then you've also got the reviews right here. So actually I think their store is actually pretty set up pretty well. Um, like I said, you've also got the um, different categories here and it shows you related content too, which is kind of nice. Okay, so this is exactly what I was talking about. You've got the different filters. So there's a whole bunch of different filters you can set up here by rating, price range. It's kind of the same thing that the other Sony readers had as well. Back to search results. And then you've also got different sort by right there. So yeah, that's the one thing I do kind of like is they have uh, plenty of sorting options. Some of the other ebook stores like Kobo, you really don't have a whole lot of sorting options sometimes. 
Okay, so then on the other page here, we've got the other content. You can actually um, download library ebooks, set up and download library ebooks directly to the device. So I'll do a different review for that too, showing how, how that all works. You've got the Google ebooks, your purchase content, and the web browser, of course, which I just showed you. You can go in here and access the dictionary, type text memos, uh, do on screen drawings uh, using the stylus or your finger. Um, and there's also the pictures, the audio player uh, that's got the headphone jack, it doesn't have speakers. And then there's various settings in here. Uh, to set up different stuff. So it has password protection too if you want to set that up and there's different uh, settings in here for um, you know the keyboard and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to wrap up this review right here. This is the general review. I'll do some more detailed reviews like I said down the road. I just wanted to show you how basically everything works with the new reader Wi-Fi. Um, check out the ebookreader.com. I'll have a lot more info on there. Uh, thank you for watching.